Okay. Pen and ink. All right. There are three basic uh, ways to work with pen and ink. And pen and ink works well with other materials too. Depending on how you lay it down, if you put the pen and ink over the material or you put the material on top of the pen and ink. Yeah, each one is you have to kind of experiment with and decide the way you want it to look. You'll need some ink, possibly, and you'll need some, I use sh Sharpie pens are perfectly acceptable, all different thicknesses and thinnesses, okay? You can also use, you dip in things, that's fine. Um, you can use repeatographs if you've got, you know, if you're lucky enough to have a set of that. Let's start with the, the messiest one. I've got here some of your sort of student grades or drawing paper, just a smaller version of it here. And with the first technique, wash, uh, a little goes a long way because this paper is pretty thin. It doesn't react to a whole lot of water very well. And so it makes it more of a, a problem, okay? Um, you know, buckle that paper and make it a mess. And you get a pill. Uh, it's gonna, so with wash and pen and ink on this type of paper especially, one swipe or two and you're done, okay? Um, otherwise the paper's gonna rip and tear on you and it's gonna be a, a mess. You can work with it wet on wet, like you can wet down the paper and then take a brush or, or a whatever, can be used like this. And the more water you add naturally, the more it works like that, okay? But once you've kind of laid it down once, look how it bleeds. That can make a nice effect if you want that kind of thing. But once you, you know, you need paper towels, quite a few. I, I always work with a lot of those. You can't really fool with it too much. Once you've laid it down, that's pretty much it. So you can get a nice blend. You can take things and work back into it mush it around, make different marks with different things, okay? You can use all kinds of stuff to paint, just like with watercolors, okay? You can use your sponge to make brush wash marks with. Uh, for this type of paper, unless you're gonna graduate to a watercolor paper, which is a little thicker, I recommend for your projects you use a limited amount of wash on this. And remember you can walk through it wet on wet or you can work with it like this. Different values. And the way you can work with it with different brushes, just like you were working with a sort of a, a line element, okay? All right, that's the first basic deal with wash. And notice how, even though I only used it a bit, it's uh, already starting to kind of buckle on me there. Um, now once you can work on it with a pen, wet, but you can't expect it to bleed on you a little. But you may want to wait for this to dry totally to work on it on the top with all kinds of things. You can work with it with, here I've got some charcoal here. Once it's dry, you can work it with it like that. And you work over the top of the charcoal. You, you just, there's no rules when it comes to boundaries on, on material. But you do have to be careful about the type of paper you use. The second technique we're going to do is very simple and straightforward and easy to control. And that is stippling or pointillism where you just literally take your pen, I'm going to use a larger pen here so you guys can see it, and dot carefully to create textures, but it does take, you can create form, the more you The more dots, the darker the value. Well, what's nice about pointillism or stippling is that it's easy for you to control. You 
See how that's working there? I'm going to show you a little closer so you can get it up close. You can use very thin dot. You can use it as a textural element, but be careful. Different size dots. When you work with uh, stippling, be careful of the tailing. That's a tail on the end of that mark. You want to be going straight up and down and creating nice, really nice dots. If you get, you know, you, if you get sloppy, if you put it on an angle, you're going to get tails. And it's going to read more like a linear element or something like that. Okay? That is what you want to try to avoid. So try to keep your pen up and down on the paper. All right. Remember, you can work line and stippling over wash. Okay? All kinds of things can be worked over the top. Okay? So, let's take a look at the last element, which is line. Which is simply just like a pencil line. Remember, you were contour line drawing, quality of line mark. Clean line, and remember, unfortunately, with pen and ink, there is no erasing. Different papers make different uh, feelings behind a piece. This is a pen and ink that I did on acrylic paper. So it has sort of a, like a canvas sort of uh, texture on the top. And notice how different it is in the way it looks. It's also quite heavy. It would hold up nicely to, to wash. And I also like to use, this is a really old school thing. These are reed pens. This was used back ever since the dawn of time when, you know, someone thought to actually make ink and make drawings with them. They go out and they go into the you know, marshy areas and cut down some plants and whack off the edges so that they're sharp on one end or both ends in this case. And you use that to actually dip into your ink and draw with that. One nice thing about these reed pens, I'm going to get a little bit more ink on there. There we go. They can go from thick to thin a lot nicer. And they tend to have a really nice quality to them, okay? You, they wouldn't think something so old school would, but man, it, they really work nicely. And they go from thick to thin without having to change pen thicknesses, okay? Um, so this is where your contour line uh, quality is really important, is in line with pen and ink. Don't forget hatching, cross hatching, it can be as fluid or as loose as you want, okay? As long as it's clean and a good quality line, okay? All right. Don't forget your brush can be a linear element as well. Make it a little lighter now. Different brushes make different marks. Um, I've got, you know, a big fat one here. All right. And you may choose to do your pen and ink drawing as loosely or as tightly controlled as you want. Almost like a, anything from a watercolor sketch to something more like this, which is a little tighter, okay? Uh, which is sort of just some roots I've been playing, just some tree roots I was just playing with for grins, just playing with my new reed pens, okay? So, good luck.